Welcome back, everyone. I'm Stacey Godbold with Sospice for the Safety Pro Roundtable podcast. My hope, or my guest today is Mark McGill, and I'm so glad to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Stacey. Thank you. Um, a lot of my team at Sospice has met you. They have such wonderful things to say about you. So um, I hope you can live up to it, Mark. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> So um, you're an EHS consultant and an author, and I have this right here. Um, the decision was easy. You're a great writer and quite the poet. <laughs> well, I started with the poem, and the poem became or came a lot many years before the the rest of the story. But yes, it's Thank it's you. a it's a wonderful piece, and I I uh, recommend it. The decision was easy. Um, by Mark McGill. And um, so this this podcast is specifically in a series of podcasts um, for safety professionals. um, And it's about advancing as a safety professional. Um, Today, our focus is going to be what the C-suite wants. And you have a really um, interesting, um, and you have an interesting experience because you were in operations and then you were and then in, and went to EHS and then now in consulting where you have a lot of access to the C-suite. So I'm really looking forward to talking and being able to um, help safety pros as they're listening to this walk away with some really good information of how, you know, what the C-suite wants from them. So starting off, do you have a, do you have a statement no, or comment? No, I'm okay. Good. Okay. So um, I guess what are your top side thoughts there? I mean, um... yeah, I, I think I think the 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 interesting thing for me as I work, like you said, I, I I did start in operations and spent many years in operations. Half of my career was in operations. I made the transition into the HSE world as my own decision, uh, which was something I wanted to do, and you know. Uh, my, I guess my uh, thoughts about the C-suite w- were so different from the operations and then just becoming a safety professional at the lower, you know, at the beginning entry level kind of thing. Uh, and then being able to uh, to work my way through the organization and then sit down with real C- C-suite uh, individuals and get their perspective. And it, it was just really eye-opening and surprising to me to hear their perspective on safety versus what I thought it was when I was in OBS, what I thought it was when I was a prof- low-level safety professional. And then, uh, you know, I'm able to now uh, have those conversations with C-suite individuals to really be open and transparent and just kind of share those, those thoughts. So let's dive specifically into that. So when you were in ops, what was your perception of the C-suite and what they wanted? Yeah, you know, I, I think, and I talk about it in, in, in my book, but, you know, uh, this was uh, many years ago, right? Uh, and uh, we always heard the phrases of safety a priority or, you know, safety first. And, and I think, uh, you know, in operations, what I felt, and, and I think uh, many of us did, was that, you know, it's just something that that uh, the leaders had to say, right? It's something, what else could they say other than safety first? However, I think that uh, I didn't know it at the time, but just the, you know, the behaviors of and the request and the and the focus was always on production and cost. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, you know, yeah, okay, that's what they've got to say. But I, I, I know that that's not what they believe, right? And and I talk a lot about it, right? And I think ops people believe, or I believe when I was in ops that I, I got promotions and, and raises for getting the job done. And, and I'm not sure that it had anything to do with getting it done safely. Yeah, so you say in your book, is it production then safety or is it safety then production? So I think it's so you're, what I'm hearing you say is after, as a, as an operations person, you're constantly wondering what is it the chicken or the egg, which is it safety or production? 
<laughs> That's right. It's very, very conflicting, right? And, and, and you hear the messaging, but you're not sure the behaviors demonstrate that. So when you moved into like a supervisor or more into like a safety professional, how did that change for you? What did your perception look like? Yeah, I, I think I just began to see the other side of it. And it's kind of like looking in two lenses, you know, from an operational standpoint or a frontline leader, it's safety from my perspective is this. But from what I begin to realize on, on the sea level is, is they truly believe uh, in what they're saying, that safety is a priority and that, you know, safety uh, really above all else. Um, it's They also believe that that isn't something they should have to say every day because uh, everybody knows that kind of you know, it's kind of that attitude, right? That everybody knows that already, right? We've been talking about that for many years. So that's a given. Uh, and and that's what I began to learn uh, that they, the way they come across to me uh, in my experience is they believe that and, and it's already a given. So why do I have to uh, talk about it each and every day? So lastly, um, as someone that works as a consultant, so you really have a different conversation with them and a different kind of view of the C-suite at this point. Um, what is your view there? Yeah, you, you, you know, I think the the view there is is knowing that there's both sides, right? And so when, when you sit down as a consultant, at least for me, is that you're able to say, you know, uh, to understand what their perspective is and kind of confirm your thoughts on, on what it is. And then also talk about, you may, you may believe that, but you know, your, your field staff is interpreting it this way, right? So the way that you communicate is so important. I, I always say in a lot of my uh, talks, it's, it's all about the conversation, right? Without the conversation, it's, it's just a, a, another point uh, out there that nobody's thinking about. So if I'm talking about production, that's what I'm talking about. And that's what people are hearing. If I'm talking about cost, that's what the, the message is about. And that's what people are hearing. And if I don't talk about safety, even though we all know it's important, it's not part of the conversation. So it's it's trying to to have conversations with them to think about the things that they're saying, the messages that they're delivering and uh, give it some thought, right? It, it, it just can't roll. We, you know, I think that the C-suite believes that they can, they can get up and carry on a conversation about most things. Right. But when it comes to, to, to safety, you, you really need to be thoughtful in what you're saying. Okay, so um, so let's look from the, so we kind of went up the, the, the ladder there. So let's look down. Okay, so so uh, um, I'm in the C-suite. Um, what do I want from my safety manager? What do I want from them? And we can break this down in a couple different ways. We can talk about their behavior, their the way that they're managing the culture. Um, I also want to talk about um, data. And kind of like what, what kind of what you want from them? Like, what do you want to receive? Um, and maybe it's, maybe you think of it in a, in a really detailed way like that, or maybe you think of it in as an overall way. But I mean, I hope we can get as specific as we can, but what do you, what, what do they want from that safety professional? Yeah, I, I think, I think the important thing here is that, you know, um, when we get into the safety professional, and I did this early in my career, right? It, it seems like I needed to be uh, very knowledgeable in all of the regs and compliance, and I wanted to make sure everybody knew that I knew those things, right? Um, uh, although coming from operations, I also believe that from a safety professional, I need I need that person to to help me work through the things that I need to do to still make me efficient but just don't make me check the box kind of thing, right? And so I, I kind of brought that as, as a safety professional, but for the C-suite, you know, 
they, they really need to know and they want to know uh, what's really going on. What's the ground truth, right? And a safety professional needs to be honest with a, a C-suite um, individual is, you know, you, you, they're looking at numbers all day and, you may not be having any incidents and those kinds of things, and that all looks good. But you have to, they need to know the ground truth. They need you to be honest. They already know that there's individuals out there that's not 100% on board, right? So let's talk about those things. Be honest. They all want to know those things because they know the right way to solve that problem or fix that problem. And it's not to run people off or, or to get rid of somebody, but it's to turn their conversations around or get that individual more engaged to show their ownership. But without having that knowledge, they can't work with that individual because everything they're seeing is on the surface. The safety professional knows the ground truth and you need to make sure you, you take the opportunity to, to share those stories. Um, one of the things that I did as a safety professional to make sure that was was happening was that uh, I would just schedule update meetings, you know, monthly with the executive vice president and then sit down and just talk about what's going on, what really the ground truth is. Um, the other thing that that most people find it difficult to do, but, uh, you know, a C-suite uh, individual needs to know uh, when they're communication or conversation was interpreted wrong. It doesn't have to be out in front of everybody, right? But if they give a communication or they try to motivate or they just say the wrong thing that promotes production or promotes cost, and you see that everybody picked up on that, take a few minutes after that meeting just to mention that to the to the the executive so that they know they need to learn as well right they uh, they don't know they don't know everything and uh, and and they all appreciate that I, I don't know how many times I've had uh, you know just that conversation although it been difficult uh, it, it's it's man they they appreciate it right and 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 they then they want to learn more right and and so they get more engaged and more involved and so they need to know that uh because whatever they say uh is what happens right that could be really hard to do is give that feedback <laughs> really hard to do so when you're talking about ground truths give me an example maybe of something that could be tough to talk about in terms of ground truth because you're saying be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, uh, you know, a, a tough conversation could be that, and I, I've had this b before, is is that you've got an individual in the field, and, and I'm real passionate about frontline leaders, because I think they're the last minute decision makers, and so that's, that's where all this stops, right? And so when you have a frontline leader that was like I was early in my career, that told answered the questions to my my leaders of what they wanted to hear and they all thought I did a really good job and I got the job done so when you have a leader who has an individual that they trust an individual that can get it done get her done kind of attitude and always is getting it done but the safety professional knows that there are some shortcuts being made or the conversation outside uh, uh, the ground truth is different than what what is being um, uh, talked about and promoted in the other conversations. It, the leader needs to know that. And again, I think it's that, you know, look, you've got a, a leader in the field that's really pushing the wrong message that uh, is, is uh, promoting shortcuts or uh, those types of things, and 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 they'll ha they'll manage that appropriately. All of them that I've done that with have managed it appropriately. That that frontline supervisor never knew I had that conversation. So this is interesting. This this kind of creates thoughts that um, so you know so many going to the C suite and saying something's just not going right. You know, I need some support or. This one thing isn't isn't working like it should, or we're having issues with it. I need some support. That's hard to do because because you talk a lot about in your book that like 
you, you and you were young. And so you had to act like you knew everything mm-hmm. for somebody to respect you. Yeah. <laughs> and was- I get it. I, I, you have to fake it till you make it. I totally get it. And then there's this kind of humility that says, um, I, I need some help here, you know, and it's, um, it's hard to do, but, but I, I think what you're saying is that they will trust you. Um, and they can walk alongside of you with certain things. Um, cause it's like, it's like with having a kid, it's like, it goes too long and you're like, why didn't you tell me, you know, cause they were scared. It's the same thing. It, it is. And, and I think the first time that I had that conversation, I, I, I was looking for this instant change, right. That the leader was going to, or the executive was going to have a conversation with the leader. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to go back into that area cause I wasn't sure what, what, uh, you know, his, his thoughts were going to be when I returned. Right. And, and what I found out was it wasn't an instant change or impact, but I started noticing in the conversations or meetings that we were all in that the executive began to have different conversations with that leader so that the leader began to understand that, um, you know, this is really important to my boss. Right. And, uh, he's asking more and more detailed questions. And so I can't, I can't, I gotta be honest. Right. And so when you start doing that, uh, you're going to be true to yourself. You know, I think if you, if you answer those and you say you're going to do it and, and you've done that in front of your peers and everybody else in a room, you're going to start doing those things. And then I think the amazing turnaround that a safety professional will see is that leader on the ground is going to struggle a little bit and they're going to ask you for help. And you got to be ready no matter when, where, or what it's about. You have to be prepared to help that individual, not start talking about compliance and talking about all of the rules of engagement, but help that individual work through that situation. And, and that's, that's a big, big win for any safety professional to, uh, to get that, uh, you know, opportunity to be able to do that. So is the C-suite really, really just worried about ROI and production? Is that what, that's all they care about? Or is there more? (laughs) Is there more? Yeah, that, you know, I, 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 it, it's definitely important. That's what we're in business for. No matter what business you're in, you're in business to make money, right? Uh, and so it's a difficult, uh, difficult conversation on how do you have that conversation. Um, but it's not all that they're worried about, but it's an important aspect. And you have to be able to bring you know, those three things together, uh, you know, cost production and safety, and how do you balance that? Um, And I don't care who you are, to have that conversation is difficult. And that's where I'm talking about, you have to plan that conversation. uh, Because, you know, if you're an executive leader, you've got somebody above you that's asking you about whatever your output is, or your cost, and you get focused on that and you pick up the mm. phone and make a call. And the next thing you know, that's traveled all the way to the boots on the <laughs> ground. And then everybody is focused on that. And you just have to be, uh, you, you know, realize that uh, it's OK to talk about um, safety as well in those conversations. I w- it's it's all day, every day kind of attitude with it. Right. So you, uh, it's not what they always are worried about. <laughs> but they're like the rest of us. It, it, they struggle to, to balance the three in a conversation, even though they believe that to be true. So outside of being honest and talking about, um, what did you say? Um, the ground truth, talking about that. Is there anything else that we can leave our listener to um, in couching us with how to you know, advance your career? Um, what, what else does the C-suite want? Is there anything else that you can think of that's really important? Yeah. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. that, um, that we, we, a lot of times as safety professional, again, I, I, I've said this before, but we get, we get lost in compliance and we forget that if we're, we're able to influence culture, 
then we really don't worry about compliance uh, because it'll just happen. And so as a safety professional, I really think it's important to understand and learn and improve your knowledge about culture and what that really means. Um, and if I can share an example of, of where it really affected me the most was that, and this was early in my per, uh, safety professional career, um, but I ended up doing a 20 week study in a location about uh, EHS, safety professionals, ops individuals, and, and, and then leaders, right? And what I walked away with was that all three groups and many of the different disciplines within the operations were all at different levels of culture. As a safety professional, we went into every conversation and every meeting as, you know, sustainable excellence. And that's all we focused on. And, and that's what we, we, we talked about. That's how we approached every conversation. An ops person who is in reactive culture doesn't really care about that, right? They're, 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 they're only going to do the things they need to do, right? Uh, and then you've got uh, middle management that's kind of, you know, being proactive because they want it to look like, you know, they're doing some really good things in their organization. But at the end of the day, we're all three in different levels of a culture, talking about three different levels of things, listening in three different ways. And we all have to be at the same level. So we really learned fast that whether you're an EHS person or executive, a middle manager, it, you come down to the level of your audience. And that's the way you approach the conversation. And if they're reactive, I don't care. All you can focus on is, is the training that's required. And then you start feeding in the other stuff so you can all take the step together. That's how you advance your culture. So if a safety professional can really focus on understanding that and, you know, getting those tools to understand what, what those cultures really mean and what the behaviors in those cultures look like, you can start understanding uh, that movement. But that's the only way you get it to move. I, I've, I've worked with it enough. The only way you get it to move is everybody get to the lowest level and you take your steps together. And if you have to work different groups, different ways, then that's just what happens. This is really good. Really, really good advice. This has been great. I really, I really appreciate it. I'm, I'm looking forward to um, more conversations with you. Mark McGill, you are a wealth of knowledge and a wealth of experience because I, I love knowledge, but when you have experience backing you, that's really, I think, um, when you are, you know, the most knowledgeable. So read the book. The decision was easy. Great poems. Also some, um, some really, <laughs> I'm serious, yeah. but you know, to be on, look at all these little notes I took. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, re it's really good. And, um, you're really honest and, um, speak a lot of a truths in this book. So the decision was easy and I really appreciate you being on today. All right. I, I appreciate it. I, I love talking about it. Uh, and, uh, uh, there's nothing fancy, right? It's just, it's just really the truth of what I believe. So, and I think it works. It works. Absolutely. C connect on, on LinkedIn with Mark. He's a great e EHS consultant. We've worked with you and uh, it was a pleasure. Thank you. You too. Thank you. All right. I appreciate it. I look Thanks. forward to it. Uh -huh.